Hello and welcome to Warp Team Brick. And uh, today we are back. I'm returning with a fairly standard mission. As you can see, a launch vehicle, it's uh, pretty average for me. Three cores. Trying to be a bit creative and uh, use the metal texture on the uh, core tank there. Also, decided to use a twin warp since I don't think I've actually used it in a video. But yeah, I tried to be a bit creative with the uh, camera placing, camera placement, and uh, camera tools, and all sorts of different uh, shots of the uh, liftoff. And so yes, this is a mission to Lathe, which is uh, pro it's one of the most popular destinations in Kerbal Space Realm, but this is not Lathe as you know it. First of all, the solar system is rescaled by 2.5 times, so it's gonna be a it's gonna be a different uh, challenge in the game there, and especially with re-entry as the atmosphere is uh, taller. But more importantly, the lathe is uh, it's a far different spot in the solar system because this is the planet pack New Horizon, New Horizons, which among many things makes uh, Kerbin a moon of uh, the gas giant Sona, which you might see fairly soon. But also, Lathe is no longer a moon of draw. It's uh, moved to being its own planet. In fact, it even has a fairly large moon. And yeah, we're gonna be going to it today. So we're currently just addressing that uh, first stage. And this uh, stage is what we use for uh, not only orbital insertion, but all our uh, orbital maneuvers on our way to Lathe. You can see the small craft, which will be the actual payload uh, be delivered to the uh, lathe surface. It has some uh, special uh, special qualities to it, which will be revealed later. And yeah, we're doing a fairly standard orbital insertion. I will admit my uh, gravity turn was a bit lacking. I guess I'm a bit rusty after two weeks of basically not playing this game. Yeah, you can uh, see there uh, when I'm not in the map screen. The Sona there. We're actually going to be approaching Sona far, uh, far closer than this because well, we're going interplanetary. And well, what you want to do when you're doing an interplanetary burn is you want to be as close as possible to the parent body, which in this case would be Sona since once we leave Kerbin we're going to be in orbit around Sona. And so to maximize the overth effect, well first, actually I'll talk about that later. Right now, I am doing some maneuver plotting, and uh, you can see that uh, for this transfer window, the uh, burn position is on the opposite side of Sona to Carbon, and of course, going to be in a lower altitude. And I planned this uh, such that uh, what I, well, my plan was to do a burn from Carbon to enter into orbit around Sona, and uh, get a, a very low uh, periapsis around Sona, so we can maximize the use of the Uberth effect. And uh, our periapsis should be aligned pretty much directly with uh, where we need a burn. It did not end up uh, being that way in actual, uh, pr in actual practice. But as you can see, I'll create a maneuver now, and we'll be able to pretty efficiently get the escape from Sona. And uh, after a bunch of uh, maneuver tweaking, we can actually get a encounter with Leith. So, and once all that plotting is done, we can time warp to our burn. And now we're ready to begin. And I have engine ignition installed, so I need to actually use Allage for this engine. And which is provided by those two smaller uh, Vernier engines. But the uh, burn is completed nominally. And now the craft is. Well, it needs its uh, maneuvers uh, replanned since, as always, uh, every maneuver executed will be slightly off from the original plan. But we're now leaving Kerbin, and fairly soon, we'll now uh, go to uh, Suna Periapsis and your escape burn. And so, getting some beautiful views of uh, the rings of Suna there. This is a very unrealistic trajectory as passing through through just a ring system runs a very high risk of being impacted by micrometeorites of all sizes. 
Uh, the current space program doesn't model that, so uh, I guess we're fine. I also initially messed up the maneuver. I was too busy getting some cinematic shots, and uh, he overburned significantly. So doing that again, I'll now actually get the maneuver correct. And there we go. Now done there. And now we escape Sona, and it's gonna be a very long way to Lath from now. In fact, it's only gonna be 800 days into mission when we do our mid-course correction. I'm pretty sure this, again, I'm using 2.5 times rescale, and well, first of all, Sona, it's uh, I believe further out than uh, Mars would be at this scale. Like if the real solar system was scaled down to the same scale as this solar system, like Kerbin would be further out from the sun than Mars. Which I feel, like, I don't, I don't know if that's uh, what the mod maker intended for us for Sona to be so far out. Basically, just I, I feel like I maybe messed the scale up when I've checked the config multiple times, and the system is indeed rescaled by the correct amount. But uh, yeah, again, it uh, if I can uh, check what time into mission this is, it's now a thousand days into mission. And so now we approach Lath. And yeah, you can see the moon uh, Dursail, I believe. Yeah, you can see some uh, beautiful uh, visual configs for Lath. It's the same ones you would use for a stock Lath. And now, my original plan was to insert into orbit around Lath. However, we lack the Delta V for that. So instead, I'm just gonna burn all the rain fuel and uh, hopefully uh, slow down from interplanetary speeds. The point where the reentry vehicle doesn't immediately melt, which it did multiple times during testing. As you can see, yeah, we're several hundred, several, several hundred meters per second short of actually inserting into orbit, and uh, that deficit becomes worse because, uh, as you'll see, I tried to reuse the final remaining stage, and the engine will refuse to ignite. First of all, it's not supposed to be affected by uh, fuel stability, but for some reason it both is and isn't. Now it's also saying I don't have enough electric charge, when I in fact do, so I guess this is Andrew and I are just being weird. Yeah, I'm going to uh, mess with this for a long time, which uh, is using time I didn't really have, as again we are rapidly approaching Lath at uh, over 5 kilometers a second. I noticed uh, spamming the uh, button, and I'm going to uh, try and reorientate the craft so the solar panel is exposed, hopefully to recharge the battery since it keeps saying I don't have electric charge. I also tried deleting the maneuver, see if that works, and now accidentally stage. So now it's uh, too late to change anything, and the craft is, uh, well it's now going to impact the atmosphere. And so, reentry effects start immediately. Yeah, the lower stages are now exploding. And you can see how bright that heat shield is. Also, the temperature gauge is on the part right above it. I've actually tweak scaled uh, both that adapter and the heat shield down a bit. It, just, it ended up, you know, lander being it. Ended up being between uh, like 0 0.65 meters and uh, 1.25 meters, so and it still abides like it still abides by the same laws as all other RKSP parts. But uh, yeah, use some tweak scale on this. I believe these are the only two tweak scaled parts on this. Yeah, the lander survives a reentry. You can see how much later is being used on the heat shield there. And, uh, unfortunately, we're going to be landing on the uh, night side of the uh, planet. Which is uh, less than ideal, especially since it appears viewers actually want to be able to see the video. That is something I did not uh, realize initially. I'm not sure why I'm going on this tangent, but you yeah, know, some of my old videos are terrible, don't watch them. Okay, these parachutes are deployed. We have splashed down, where the uh, scatter waves. Uh, uh, they're very extreme, apparently. 
I do want uh, to use the mod. It's, I believe it's Air Park. I guess I'll come up later. There it is. That allows you to essentially pause the craft. Which, I, I realize can be a bit cheesy, but in this case, I need to, I don't want to sit here for literal hours waiting for physics time warp to, I guess, do a daylight side. Now we can time warp and then deploy the secret feature of this probe. Since this probe, once it's landed, can deploy this uh, weather balloon. Well, I guess I'm referring to a balloon. That, I guess the entire probe is the uh, weather balloon. And so, yeah, we can now do some uh, enhanced uh, atmospheric readings here. We also get some nice views from the camera, uh, provided by whole cam VDS, I believe. Could be wrong that there's like three different modes to add cameras in my install. Now we pass through the cloud layer. And the first view, all we could see was ocean. But now you can see both some land masses in the distance, as well as the Ursula, as mentioned earlier. Oh, and much to say here, just getting some uh, nice views of life. We continue to ascend. Also, you might notice that, that due to uh, PV equals NRT, uh, the uh, volume of the gas in the balloon will increase as the outside pressure decreases, which uh, will lead to interesting events at uh, 40 kilometers, as you can see. Where, and this is by design, uh, cur the mod uh, Cur Balloons, which adds these uh, just balloons. Now, we're now uh, without our means of ascent. I've immediately staged the uh, parachutes, but uh, they're gonna take a while to deploy. This descent is pretty much exactly the same as the other descent, just slower. Well, I guess we start at different out we, we start at different speed, but we have the same terminal velocity. So I guess it's about the well I'm not sure why that's the tangent I decided to go down. Yeah, we land once more, and now this craft will just serve as maybe a potential navigation beacon for later missions. But yeah, it's getting thrown around pretty heavily by those waves. Yeah, I want to thank you for watching. Thank you for not leaving this channel while I didn't upload for two weeks. And goodbye!